Now, when I first met Mr. Muhammad, it was in Detroit, Michigan, in 1951. I was doing whatever. In fact, I was looking for me some light green. Me and my boys. So the fag, he had it. So that's where we had to go to get it. But it just so happened this day, he didn't have nothing. So one brother said, well, I know where they got some private bear. They got some private stock. So yeah, where does he live at? He lived down in the Brewster Project. See, we got the history. You see, the rest of the people are talking, but we got the history. Not only do we have the history, we got films and pictures. And that's what you didn't understand, and that's what Mr. Lee didn't understand. Because remember this, a camera is a narcotic. Hollywood can make you laugh, it can make you cry. You went there and saw that picture, you wanted to kill Elijah Muhammad. Because Hollywood can make you laugh, it can make you cry, they want to kill a man that tried to help you. That's what Hollywood can do. And if you don't believe it, then you, got, you need your head examined. That's why they call it Hollywood. You go out there and you see a whole street, a whole city, and it'd be a pop in the back of it. They call it do it in the back lot. So we don't want you to be fooled because this is the time of the emancipation and all defects. You got to wake up. I'll be finished because we got to go. Maybe we need a cigarette. Maybe we got to go. We got to call our girl. Maybe we ain't ate yet. So we recognize that. We don't take up your time. We get right to it. But we want to let you know that we are here and we're going to stay here and we are the ones. We're not no phonies. So we went on down there. This brother down there that had the private stock, his name was Jasper Pruitt. Jasper X Pruitt. So what the hell is this man talking about X? He said, uh, and where you live at, brother? I said, I run around right around the corner from you. I said, I didn't know you was here. But he was. He was a Muslim. He just said he couldn't live the life, so he had him a girl. He was pimping. Tell you the truth, he said, brother, you stop. He said, I know I ain't right. He didn't lie. He said, I know I ain't right. I ain't supposed to be doing this. He said, but I believe my heart. I believe, but I'm just weak. See, many men won't admit that they're weak. But it takes a man to admit his faults and admit he's weak. So he said, I'm not going to disgrace anything, so I just stay away. But I'm going to tell you all about it. And he started telling me, and I started listening. And then I started going to the Temple of Islam, the Holy Temple of Islam, number one, Michigan, 1474 Frederick Street between Russell and Lyon, Ryan Pell. Because I'm going to bring it to you because we not no phonies. We the real thing. I went in there. You talking about an ex. Betty X ain't got no pride to over no ex. All of us had an ex. Edward X. Jeremiah X. Youth Joseph X. Jack X. All of them was X's over there. Until, you understand, it was decided that we have a holy name. I want you to know this because you got to understand. Because somebody might make you, make, might talk you into making a move and you don't understand. And you be coming to go up against your brother. But I'm letting you know, brother, when you met us, you met your mammy. I want to warn you. Because I know the provocateurs are sitting here. They're here listening. But I want to warn you. You forgot that we were here. We had just been laying dormant. Why? It's because we were, we were working. We were working quietly. Because it is necessary. And we're not threatening you. That's not our, that's not our, um, uh, that's not our desire to do that. We don't want to do that. But we just want to let you know. So, uh, in order to get your ex, you had to write a letter. You didn't know that. You're walking around with X on, but you don't even know what that is. That was placed there to signify that you recognize that the name after in other words, your mother is your given name. Then you got to ask. That means that I don't know what my slave name is. It ain't Jones. It ain't Johnson. It ain't Anthony. It's not O'Brien, O'Toole. I just don't know. 
And if anybody know anybody know about mathematics, you know that the X is an unknown quantity. A wise man said to give him an X. Mr. Muhammad wasn't the one to give the X. A wise man told him, the one that caught him and taught Mr. Muhammad. He said he give out approximately 25,000 names, holy names as they called them. Kareem, Bokar, Ali, Rashid, he give out all those names. But then he left, he stayed here three years and then he left. Mr. Muhammad said, what should I do? He said, if you want to give him some names, all right. You have my permission for you to name them. But in the meantime, give him X. Joseph X, Joseph 1X, Joseph 2X, Joseph 3X, and all that. That's how you got it. But in order for you to get the X, you got to write a letter. Took me a year to write it because it had to be perfect. Inside the nation of Islam, Spike Lee can't take you there. Because he wasn't there, number one. And then he's in love. You don't fall in love if you try to teach people the truth. If you're in love with a man, why aren't you what he is? Malcolm was a Muslim. We know he was a Muslim because we were with him and we made him a Muslim. Elijah Muhammad made him a Muslim by teaching him truth. Ozzy Davis ain't no Muslim. Ruby D not, Ruby D not no Muslim. Spike Lee ain't no Muslim. He didn't, he didn't believe in no, no religion. But in order to walk with Malcolm, you had to be a Muslim. I walked with him for 12 long years until Mr. Muhammad sent him away and walked with Falcon 11 years until he decided to leave and worked for Elijah Muhammad 25 long years and I did such a good job. You know what he told me one day? He said, Brother Captain, I said, yes, sir. He said, you got a lifetime job with me. And he's the only leader that you know of in this modern day. That when he passed, he took his shoes off. He wasn't like Custer. He didn't die with his boots on, brother. He took his shoes off. Well, you know why? We, Allah was with him, number one, and then we laid at his door. And didn't let our hair get messed up on his head. Because the fed of ye was there. The men of sacrifice. You called them the fruit of Islam. Then I met Mr. X. Because I don't disrespect any man. Mr. X. He come in, he was a very imposing man. You could tell that he was intelligent, he knew where he wanted to go, you could tell that. And then we struck up a conversation. Because they meet up, they introduce all the new ones to those who have been there. We introduce each other. Because this that we have was built on love. That's why you still, still see it standing like a solid wall. It's a solid brick wall. That's why you see it standing. I know men that served 20 years in here today and was, and was not guilty. But they weathered the storm. Because you know why? Because he wasn't confused because Allah had his mind up here. He bore witness that there was no God but Allah in hell. I don't care what it is. The gates of hell could not prevail against his mind because he knew what he was doing, knew why he was there, and for what reason. You couldn't do that. Take a man to do that. Take a man to do that. And I haven't had an opportunity to say that, but I want to say it before a whole lot of people so you'll know. Because we struggle. We struggle. Then it comes time for Mr. X to be, get appointed to his teaching. He just didn't start out in no New York. He was in the fruit just like I was. And one day he wrote a letter to Mr. Muhammad. And you know what he did? He criticized a minister by the name of Lemuel. Lemuel X. That the Holy Apostle, you know, the man is not teaching right, you know what I mean? He, he ain't studying. Uh, uh, his wife runs him and everything. Maybe he was telling the truth. But let me tell you what Mr. Muhammad told him. He said, Brother, I received your letter. He said, However, I don't appreciate you criticizing my minister because I put him there. I know his assets and liabilities. I know his weakness and I know his strengths. I know all about his wife. I put him there. And I'll back him. And I don't appreciate you 
writing to me, criticizing him. And I want to let you know that because I back it. Now, what you do, if you go to him and ask him, can you help him? If he accepts you, then I will accept you. And that's how Mr. X got on what they call the rostrum standing at the podium. That's the only way he got up there. I'm going to bring it to you because these are liars. And God hates the liar. But I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you shoot me down now, come on, shoot. What I want to show you briefly, I want to show you briefly that when you start out in this popular, the question remains, can you take what you put out? That's the question here. It's not love. It's not your name. But can you take, if you dish out punishment, can you take your punishment when it comes your time? So he started teaching. And he was good. Then one day he come to me, he even made me quit my job. I had a job paying me $150. I'm calling their artist. In, 19, in, the first, in 1951, late 51, early 52, that was big money. You know what he told me? He coming to me, he said, brother, we got a restaurant down there called Shabazz. He said, they ain't got no cook down there. I said, well. He said, well, you a cook, aren't you? I said, yeah, I'm a cook. He said, well, we need you to go down there and help. I said, brother, I'm working. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know you're working, but we need you down there to help. I said, what do you want? What, I mean, what do you want me to do? I'm working. He said, but don't you love? Don't you want to help Elijah Muhammad? Don't you help, want to help do this work? That was my weakness. Because I loved Elijah Muhammad. I'd never seen him, but I listened to what he was saying. I loved him with a passion. I didn't love him uh, 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 blindly, but I loved him because I could see what he was doing and what he was saying. So I quit my job and went down there to work. You know what they were paying down there? He said, now, we're going to pay you $25 a week if we get it. And most of the time, they didn't have it. And he had, they had an old raggedy room upstairs over the temple. He said, now you can stay there. He was living out there in Eastern Michigan. That's where he was living when I won. He ain't no, there's no Detroit Red, brother. We were players. That brother, man, we were players. We hung out with the pimps, hustlers, players. So we knew all of them come through, all the star holes and everything. We knew them because that was our thing. So he was in Easter, which is a suburb of Detroit. I'll run it down, brother, because history is best qualified to reward our research. So he come to me one day. I went there, started working. So one day he come to me. He said, brother, do you hear what they're saying about me? I said, no, I don't know what they're saying about you. I ain't heard nothing. He said, brother, I'm getting ready to leave this time. I said, for what? He said, they're talking about me. I said, what they're talking about you for? Because you don't even know. First of all, you don't even know he started out in Detroit. And you don't even know why he left Detroit. You say, well, he's dead. Well, then if he bring him back alive, and let him come up here and bear witness to truth or falsehood. But you can't. You know why? You can't follow a dead man. You haven't seen nobody come back yet. And it never will be. That's not God's way. He said a president. He said, you're born and you die. When I call you, you're gone. Because I'm a, I'm a man to tell the truth. I'm just about finished now because we don't want to tell you everything, get, get into everything, because we have another speaker here. And he can talk too. We all could talk. How do you think we couldn't talk when you're seeing all those people around? You think one man did that? Do you think Mr. X was the only one that was working? This is what you got to understand. If you've seen all those people and seen them going from coast to coast when he went on the West Coast, this man was the one. Malcolm ain't never sold no papers and he never went out fishing. That's a lie. Never did. He didn't have to. All he would come is teach.